Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Most Merciful. I welcome you with the Islamic greeting. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah's peace and blessings be on all of you. Dear viewers, I welcome you to another in this series, Understanding Islam. And in this segment, we will be looking at one of the evidences, one of the many evidences, which will, God willing, convince you that Islam is the true religion of God. As I mentioned in the early segment, the previous segment, every religion claims that theirs is the true way. Islam is no different in that respect. However, as I said, for us to judge, we find ourselves in this situation of doubt. Well, in fact, which is the correct religion? Everybody claims that their religion is the true religion. Maybe it's better for me just to stick with the one that my parents brought me up with. That's what I'm comfortable with. You know, this is what's easy for me. However, God gave us intelligence. What is comfortable for us may not be the correct thing. We have to judge right and wrong according to our reason, which is the product of our intelligence. God did not give us this faculty, this faculty which separates us from the animals, from the rest of the animal world. He did not give it to us for nothing. Not just merely to put materials together, to uh, build homes, to make cars, to do jobs, etc. This is not the purpose of that intelligence, the sole purpose. We benefit in this capacity. However, if we look in the animal world, we see the animals building homes, raising families, modifying the environment to various degrees as they need. So this use of intelligence is not the primary use. Otherwise, we are no different from the animals. The primary use of intelligence here is to distinguish between right and wrong. God gave us this faculty. So when it comes to religion, we use the intelligence when it comes to things concerning our daily work. If we have to choose a job, we choose the job which will give us the most benefit, material benefit, which has the most amenities. You know, it, a car comes along with it, or two months vacation instead of one, vacation, one month. So we're using our intelligence to choose here in the material world. But when it comes to religion, oftentimes people don't want to use that intelligence. They say, well, you know, this is not what I'm used to. Uh, I, I'm, my family, I was raised as this. You know, everybody in my area, they were this, and that's what I better be. No. We don't deal with our material life in this fashion. And this material life is a very short period of time that we're on the earth. A short period of time and we're gone. We cannot take the things of this material life with us. We all know that. What we will take with us is the true religion of God. If we follow that religion, that's what we will take with us out of this life. And that is what will provide for us a life of everlasting bliss in the next life. The true religion of God. So we cannot afford to be very lackadaisical with this issue of religion. We cannot say, oh, religion, it's a private thing. No. Religion is a public and important thing. Not so uh, important that we only uh, use it in our families, we only in our community. So no, it is important in that it should affect all aspects of our lives. It is a public thing. It is the way for salvation. We cannot afford to play around with our future. Therefore, dear viewers, we must use our intelligence. 
put aside the emotions, put aside our environment, the environment which we grew up in, and use the faculty which God gave us to distinguish right from wrong. Islam states categorically that it is the true religion of God. And it presents for you a series of evidences. In this segment, we will look at one of those evidences. The first, the name Islam. If we look at the various religions, we find that the name of the religion itself was never given by the founder of the religion. That is, Hindus. Hinduism, this is the name given to people who came from the Indus Valley. India, Hindu, it is a name of a people and place. If we look at Christianity, it's named after Christ, Jesus Christ. Jesus never told his followers, your religion is Christianity. Look at Judaism. Judaism is named after the tribe of Judah, one of the 12 tribes. Moses and subsequent prophets never told their followers that your religion is Judaism. These were names given at later periods of time. And so on, if we look into the various other systems, the other religions, Confucianism, etc., they're either named after the founders themselves, named after them, or the area in which they evolved, developed, or they were given based on some uh, physical trait, etc., of the people. However, when we look at Islam, what we find is not a, the same situation. We find that the name Islam is not the name of a people, not the name of a place, but it is the name of the central pillar or central concept of the religion itself. Its name, Islam, is the name in Arabic for the principle of submitting one's will to the will of God. Islam means fundamentally submission, that we submit our wills to the will of God. It also means peace. The term peace comes from it, Islam. Salam. You hear in our greeting, Salam Alaikum, peace be unto you. Salam comes from Islam. Because when one submits one's will to God, then one attains true peace. This is where contentment and peace comes from. Submission of one's will to God. Knowing that whatever takes place in this life, it is according to the destiny of God. What God has chosen in our lives, it's for our own good. And that what is required of us is only to choose what we know to be correct in each and every incident of our lives. Correct meaning what God has identified as correct, avoiding what God has identified as incorrect. Because if we are to choose merely according to how we feel, we may feel that something is correct because it is pleasing to us, pleasing to our emotions. But it may not be really correct. What is pleasing to us is not necessarily what is best. So we cannot leave the judgment 
of right and wrong merely to our emotions. We have to follow guidance. Guidance of the one who created man, created the circumstances of human life, knowing well what is best for man. So he gave us a way of life, identifying in that way what is correct and what is incorrect. So when we say we submit our wills to the will of God, it means we follow the commandments of God in each aspect of our lives. We choose between right and wrong based on revelation, not on emotion and desire, but on revelation. When we do that, we enter into a state which we call submission to the will of God, which in Arabic is called Islam. And if we go to the scripture of Islam, called the Quran, to the fifth chapter and the third verse, we find there God saying, This day I have perfected your religion for you, completed my favor upon you, and have chosen for you Islam as your religion. And I have chosen for you Islam as your religion. This is God addressing man. In the third chapter of the Quran, in verse 85, we find God also saying, If anyone desires a religion other than Islam, submission to God, never will it be accepted of him. So the name Islam is not something which people uh, came about centuries after the time that the message was brought, but something which is written in the scripture itself. The name, submission to the will of God. The term Muslim means one who submits to the will of God. It is an adjective which is, which is derived from the root Islam, Muslim, one who submits to the will of God. I know in English it may sound a little strange because you think of Christianity and Christian. So people want to say Islam and an Islam. They may call a Muslim an Islam. But this is not uh, how the Arabic uh, functions. Islam is the religion. Muslim is the one who follows that religion. Idara in Arabic means administration. Mudir is the administrator. So this is a common uh, way in which certain adjectives are formed in Arabic. So it is Islam, submission to the will of God, and Muslim, one who submits his will or her will to God. What does this mean? This means that the religion of Islam is not a new religion. Muhammad, may God's peace and blessings be upon him, who brought the final message with the scripture, the Quran. He never claimed that this was a new religion. And if you read the verses of the Quran, you will never find in there that this was a new religion. In fact, what you find is that it was the religion of mankind from the very first man set foot on this earth, Adam and his wife Eve. The religion which God gave them after their creation, after their test in paradise, the religion which God gave them was that of Islam. The very test in paradise was a test of the will of man. God gave Adam and Eve 
the garden with all of its fruits, etc., etc. All things were there for them. But one thing was forbidden. Human nature desires the forbidden. However, the correct way is to submit to the will of God. Adam, the human being, failed in that test, disobeyed. However, God taught him how to repent. So he turned back to God. He and Eve turned back to God in repentance, and God accepted their repentance. And then they were put up on earth with that religion, submission to the will of God which contained in it a system of repentance where man may turn back to God directly when one commits error. When Adam committed an error, there was no one between him and God to turn to. He turned and prayed directly to God. He asked God's forgiveness whenever he committed any kind of error. However, once he was sent to earth, having gone through that test as a man, God chose him to be also the first prophet of mankind. And he received revelation, the explanation of the religion of God, which he taught his family and the early generations. This is Islam. Submission to the will of God. It began with the creation of man. It began as a religion in terms of human practice on the earth with Adam. It went down to all of the other prophets that came after him. And God states in the Quran very clearly that he has sent to every nation and tribe messengers, calling them, all of them, to this submission, calling all of the people to submission worshiping God alone and avoiding the worship of false gods. This is the essence of the message. Prophet Moses, Prophet Noah, Prophet David, Prophet Abraham, Prophet Jesus, all of the prophets of God, ending with the last of the prophets, Prophet Muhammad. May God's peace and blessings be upon all of them. All of them carried the same message submission to the will of God. So though Islam, as we know it today, appeared in the seventh century, it was not the beginning. Islam was the teaching of Jesus. It was the teaching of Moses, of Abraham, and of Adam. Submission to the will of God. This is the true religion of God. The name Islam is found in the scripture itself. Chapter 5, verse 3. Chapter 3, verse 85 of the Quran. Both affirm for us that God has chosen Islam as the religion of man. And that he will not accept from us any other religion but Islam, submission to the will of God. So, dear viewers, this is the first point I would like for us to consider. The teaching of Islam is not a new teaching. The religion of Islam is not a new religion that we have to choose between it and other older religions. It is the religion of God to man. Therefore, I hope that you will reflect on this point and follow the series of programs as they appear on the television. If you have any suggestions that you would like to make, then please write to me, Dr. Bilal Phillips, care of 
The program Understanding Islam. Sharjah TV, P.O. Box 111. Again, the address Understanding Islam. Sharjah TV, P.O. Box 111. Sharjah, naturally. If you would like further information about Islam, you would just like to call in and just get some direct information, you may call to the Islamic Information Center in Dubai, phone number 358-190, or fax 358-193. At any rate, I'd like to thank you for following this series, Understanding Islam, and I hope to see you or to be with you again in the next segments. Thank you, dear viewers, and I bid you farewell. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.